The very nature of God's divine disposition has been imparted to every single one of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And by being recipients of the Lord Jesus Christ through his grace and loving mercy, we become partakers of his divine nature through his exceeding great and precious promises. We escape all the things that would add up to hate, rejection, familiarity and reaction and passivity. Love is motivating, so love is action. Passivity is stagnation with a wandering mind without the ability to move with God in his divine essence. So the Lord says to Peter, I take the responsibility for your denying me. It'll be no different. You're going to have the key to the Gentiles, the key to the Samaritans, the key to the Jews. Why? Loving mercy. I make that commitment the moment you believed. I'm the initiator. I'm the provider. And I'll do it. And you'll come through later. Because charity never faileth. Paul, you're fighting in Romans, the seventh chapter. But don't worry. I'll get you through that chapter. And it will not be because of your performance. It'll be because of your faith in my performance at the cross. The cross will not be made of none effect by me ever toward you. Neither will the word of God ever be made of none effect by me toward you. I make a commitment that I'll take on the responsibility of your life. Unconditionally, unrestricted, forever. And as we walk in love and walk by faith and not by sight and go into supernatural provisions by an intimate relationship with God through loving mercy. And what is loving mercy? Loving mercy is God making a commitment through mercy by removing all the effects of sin and sins when they're still going on only allowing them to hinder fellowship and to cause loving discipline. So loving mercy never changes. You want to know my name, says God to Moses, it is loving mercy. That's my name. And therefore, I will take you and hide you in the cliff of the rock. You will enter into a repository relationship with me. God says in Hosea 4 and 17, Leave Ephraim alone. Give her up to her idols. Leave her alone. Don't say anything to her. Then in 11.8, he said, I can't do it. I took care of her as a child. I brought Israel in as a nation. I can't do it. Don't leave her alone. Go after her with love. That's God. Because I'm in covenant with her. I'll never leave her and I'll never fail her. Because of who I am. Love isn't something I've added to myself. Love is something I am. When a man or woman of God is, walks in the meekness of truth, the objectivity of grace and the filling of the spirit, using recovery momentarily when necessary, Love isn't something they add to a situation. Love is something they reveal in a situation. And the cross of Christ becomes effective. The quickening power of the Holy Spirit becomes residual. And faith becomes expanded. And grace begins to have total dominion. And mercy becomes an extreme covering. And the provision is God. 
And so God says, I'm for you. And because I'm for you in this loving kindness, who can ever be against you? I'm for you. If you make your bed in hell, I don't like what you're doing, but I'm for you and nobody can ever be against you. No one can lay any charge to you. No one can ever condemn you. I'm for you. And remember that no one can ever separate you from my love for you. Receive it. And I'll reproduce it. And people on this dark world Worlds in this dark world system will get to know that there is a God beyond human resources. There is a love beyond eros and phileo. There is a purpose beyond man and time. There's a value system beyond the right emotion. There's a loyalty and faithfulness beyond duplicity, hypocrisy. There's something that is different to be revealed. And it's God. 